Hi everyone, I'm Deb and I'm here to teach you how to do fluid acrylic painting on a 8x10. This one is a canvas board. Some of you have the canvases themselves. We've got paint lined up here and I'm going to demonstrate. You guys can either stand up or make sure you can see, but it's pretty easy. Make sure that your canvas is got uh, the paper on all four sides because we want to keep the paper off of the chairs and off of the floor so and it, it will run on the sides and that's okay if it gets too messy we're going to put paper towel down where the paint is getting too thick for you first of all we've got two pair of gloves the first pair and if you guys are eating keep eating and uh, we can put the gloves on later. So I'm going to put these gloves on because I'm going to lay the background of the painting down. <coughs> and the background color is going to be this cream gold. And you don't have to be gentle about this. You can just kind of uh, pour it on. You don't have to pour the whole cup on and then take whatever hand you got and just kind of smush it in, rub it around, get it on the sides. Most important part is make sure that the whole surface has got the gold paint. The reason for that is because this base layer allows the other colors to move on it. Now, if you got too much, like I did, just kind of pour it back in a bit. There's no exact science, there's no rules, so nothing you can do wrong. See what I mean? It's a little messy. <laughs> That's okay, because it will start to level out. Okay. Sometimes you just tap it. And when you have ridges and curves and humps, it just adds texture to your whole piece. So then you, at the same time you're doing it? you can along. eat if you want, or you can follow along, whichever you wish. Now the picture that we're going to emulate is this, and it is of aspen trees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the next color that we're going to use with a popsicle stick is our brown. For our base. So with the dark brown, I just put my popsicle stick in, my dark brown, and you don't have to be exact. I'm going to lay it down on the base of this board to act like my surface, my ground. And it doesn't have to be straight. However you want it. So if you, uh, is it brown, or brown. This is the brown. There's a brown and there's a black. And the brown is the ground? Ground, yeah, that's ground. And so you can make hills in there. You can make it straight across. You can put all kinds of background in it with the popsicle stick and your brown paint. So I'm just kind of drawn in, like, oh, one third the way up, because I'm doing it uh, horizontally, not vertically. And I'm just gonna throw in some tree or some background hills. And that's all we're gonna use that brown. Show. Yeah. 
So this is what mine looks like. And you hold it down too long and that paint's going to run off the... Can you show the camera? Love the dripping. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay. Now, there's a gold paint and there's a yellow paint. So, they are going to be our leaves. And so it's a highlight and um, darks. So a light color, a dark color, but they're all gonna be the leaves of the aspen tree. Now, the white is in a paper cup. And that's for a reason. Because this is how you make aspen trees. You make a little point in your cup and I'm going to go swiping it up and down and up and down and creating lines. The heavier the line, it's more of your foreground. The, the lighter, thinner one is your background aspen trees. So you can have a whole forest if you go up and down, up and down, up and down, and make a couple of them a little fatter. Maybe one on the left, one in the middle or something, but fatter meaning more paint. So, here we go. Okay, you don't have to use all of the paint. And then you're done. Go all the way over, up, over the edge, over the edge, over the bottom, over the top, over the bottom, over the top. Yep, there you go. We have the rulers, the paint um, stirrers. Yeah, those. Take your paint stirrer and go down one of those white lines. You are creating a tree. Not like this, flat. Lay it flat on the paint. Just like you're rolling a violin. Here. Setting it and pulling it. From the bottom to the top, to the top to the <laughs> Either way, either way, it really doesn't matter. All you're doing is uh, creating a wider tree, a straighter tree. So I just take it and run it up and down. Now, if you get some black in it or brown in it, no worries. Yeah, just take some of your white that you uh, have got dribbled on your paper there and if it works better for you to do from the bottom to the top, that's okay. Now, if you're um, wanting to add paint, like I said, uh, get a clean popsicle stick and either dip in your cup or dip in your puddle that you have on your paper. Now, abstract, in the abstract world, it's defined as um, movement of paint and texture and uh, color. And there's no real rhyme or reason. It's just movement of color. In, um, ab uh, not abstract, uh, not illusion, what word am I trying to think of? Impressionistic is what this is. You, you are going to, with the, the color and the movement of the paint, your brain is going to put it together that this is a tree because it has some kind of assimilation of 
the shape that's going to look like a tree, especially when we start putting the leaves on it. Now, you've got a skewer, a shish kebab skewer, okay? We're going to make branches off of your trunks of your tree. And all it is is go left and right and left and right and left and right and left, little over here, little over there. No particular rhyme or reason, you're just going to create lots of branches. And you're going to probably be picking up the tan in the white as well. So you just take it and put up there and over here and, and it's pretty subtle, it's pretty subtle. Um, and create like this, the better you get. You understand, as time goes on, you understand how that paint moves and, and which colors will mix well with others. There are some of these acrylic paints that just sit like a rock on your canvas and they don't like to move or they, uh, they're heavier. The consistency of the paint is also key. I, uh, watered down or thinned out the paint with a product called Floetrol. Floetrol is a conditioner of the paint. It's what painters put in their big spray machines so that it'll flow through the machines better without clotting or clogging up the, um, the machine. So it's, it's a liquid uh, that looks like uh, watered down white paint. It does not change the color of the paint, and it just makes it flow better. The consistency that we have in these cups is kind of like um, warm honey. It's, it's thick, but yet it pours. It will pour when you tip it over. And that is a key to also of uh, uh, your paints being able to move and you be able to manipulate it into the shapes that you want to. How are we doing? Good. Yeah? Cool. Oh, this is fun. fun. Yes, this is fun. This is fun. Nessie is fun. <laughs> so, if we're ready for the next step, which is you're going to pick up your little q-tips. The q-tips are going to go into the yellow and the gold paint. So if you start with one end on the yellow, stay with that end on the yellow. Use the other end for your gold. So we're going to alternate like gold yellow for the leaves. Now this yellow, we'll see how we're going to do. Just dip it in. And got it. Okay. Oh, you took it apart, didn't you? <laughs> I was going to, but I thought maybe there's a reason. Of course I did. Oh, of course I did. <laughs> I thought, why did she put that right? <laughs> All right, you guys. So these don't look like leaves. But your brain's going to put it together and say, oh, these are leaves, because they're at the tops mm -hmm. of the trees. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> your brain fills in blanks. He just died. I'm just going to do this and do one of them. Well, you could do that. <laughs> it might take you a while. I thought you'd like to keep my fingers on your heart. So you leave the yellow, okay? 
Now, you can put some down at the bottom of your painting because you know how leaves fall at the base of the tree? That's what we're doing here too. Just a few, not a whole bunch. Just like that, on the other side of your Q-tips. You do gold over the yellow and the same? Yep. Just, um, it, you watch when you lay that, that gold down, look what it's doing. It's coming up harder and better than your yellow, okay? So, what you're doing is you're giving some dimension, some different textures to that painting to give it a little variety. <laughs> Picasso started this way, so can you? stick, dip it in just a little bit because you're going to make those black, little black dots on your aspen tree and they're just random wherever you want them. And you just kind of dot, dot, dot. Yeah, clean popsicle stick with black on it and what I do is I lay it lateral to my canvas and just dot it on on the white on the trunks of the trees and with this black on your branches you can kind of outline those too so that they show up better. Are you guys liking it? Yes. It's coming together, isn't it? Especially when you put in those blacks. It really shows up. It shows up. Once again, you can see uh, all of my work on uh, coachesartisans.com and come back again.